I'm Danny. This is Asha. We're two Kiwis who, after five years living in London, bought a sailboat called Bacchus and set off on an adventure to sail home to New Zealand. We sailed the south coast of England, the Atlantic coast of France, Spain and Portugal, the Canary Islands and then all 19 days across the Atlantic Ocean to the paradise of Barbados. After three months in the Caribbean, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Martinique and Grenada, we found ourselves a little stuck. There was a global pandemic going on. We spent 41 days wondering what to do in Curacao before deciding to head to Panama. We were finally able to transit the canal and are now heading home across the Pacific. Follow us on our adventure. This episode is a throwback to over a year ago and is something I've been meaning to put together for a long time. Before we set off on this adventure, we were lucky enough to have Ash's parents come to visit and as his dad is a boat builder, we all decided to sell our inflatable and build a wooden dinghy together. Each day we cycled to a friend's workshop in the neighbouring town of New Haven to get to work on our Chesapeake Lightcraft nesting dinghy. All up, it took us 17 days. As we weren't into making videos at this time, I apologise for the quality of the footage but hopefully it gives you a good idea about what was involved. Our friends Phil and Krista were kind enough to let us use their shed for the project. We bought the dinghy as a kit set, which meant all the wooden pieces came pre-cut and we just had to put them together. I told Danny it was going to be just like building an IKEA bookcase. The first job was to epoxy the bulkheads together. All the resins and fillers that we'd need had come with the kit. Each piece of timber had to be sealed with epoxy resin to make it waterproof. Here I am working on the centreboard trunk and the rudder stock. The dinghy is built using the stitch and glue technique. Copper ties are used to hold the planks in place and then epoxy glue is applied to the seams. Once the glue is dry, you can take the ties out. The planking is 6mm plywood which means for a wooden boat, she's quite light. At Bob's suggestion, we added a sculling rollock to the transom. This means that we can scull the dinghy with one oar if we want. Here's that stitch and glue technique I was talking about earlier. You can see those copper ties there, how they've gone through the little holes on the planks and then been twisted together. And then we've gone along with a syringe and put the epoxy glue into the seams. Once the glue's all dry, we can just cut the ties and pull them out. So over here, Danny is working on part of the sailing assembly. This is the centreboard. So Danny's just using a plane at the moment to help shape it. And she's, she's getting all the glue and epoxy off. So this was another piece of uh, plywood, this board. And these are some of the other pieces that we're working with. So this is what the boat looked like when it came in the box. So this hunk here is going to be the tiller to steer it. And this is one of the seats here. And so you can see they're all uh, pretty rough looking scraps of timber. That's the skeg, which is like the little keel on the bottom. Um, but when they're all put together, they turn into something quite cool like this. So Danny is working on the mast at the moment. This was a square section of timber when it arrived. It's quite long, it's almost three meters long. She's using the plane to shape it and if you can see now we've actually planed it down so that the it's no longer square it's taking the sides off it and uh, turning it eventually into a circle and we're doing all of that with just this little hand plane which takes off ribbons of wood each time you go down you can see the square section of what it started with that's the other the other end of it 
clamped to the table. So that is going to turn into the mast for when we're sailing. So we actually already had a tender. We bought a little inflatable dinghy um, when we bought the boat. And we've decided to not use it um, and sell it. We actually sold it to a mate of ours uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them, the inflatables aren't very durable. Uh, so if they get a puncture or they get a hole, uh, they're not much good. Um, the other reason is that when we tried to store the inflatable on Bacchus, because we don't have much room on our foredeck, uh, the boat took up all of the room. And so it made uh, using the anchor or trying to moor the boat using the front cleats really hard to do because you just couldn't get up there. There wasn't enough room. So a really cool thing about this dinghy is it's actually called a nesting dinghy. And this part here, this bulkhead here, actually uh, the boat comes apart there. You actually cut the boat in half down that bulkhead and these screws here uh, get undone and the whole bow section here comes off and it will sit inside the stern section. So the boat will actually only be, when it's put away on deck, from there to there uh, big, which is about 1.2 metres, I think 1.4 metres and then 1.2 this way. So it's a really compact little boat and that's one of the reasons why we're quite excited about it because it will free up a lot of space uh, on Bacchus where we're quite short of space at the moment. As anyone who's followed the America's Cup will know, getting the appendages the right shape is really important. Here's Danny working on ours. So, this is the trunk for the dagger board. So this little dinghy's got a centre board and the centre board stops it going sideways when you're sailing along. So the trunk sits like this in the boat. And this is the beautiful dagger board that Danny's been shaping and that slots down through the trunk. And it would normally go this way, no this way, the boat's going that way. Uh, they don't fit. Uh, and we don't know what's gone wrong because we bought this as a kit set and all the pieces were pre-cut and we've put them together and it's like not even close to being the right size as you can see. So we either need to build a new trunk or we need to build a new dagger board. Trunk. We opted to cut down the dagger board and Danny had to redo all of that shaping. With the glue dry, it's time to take out those stitches. Here's Dad's handy trick with the sandpaper for shaping that mast. And here's Mum, getting the job done. More epoxy resin, and this time we're mixing it with wood powder to make a thick glue which we'll use to create fillets on the inside of the hull along all the seams and the bulkheads, which will help make the dinghy nice and strong. We fiberglassed the bottom of the dinghy, both on the inside and on the outside. I really enjoyed this part. goes the resin. I'd finished up my job in London, so my corporate Amex card got to do one final job as a fiberglass squeegee. I had some really good trips away on that card and now it gets to help with one more. Woohoo! Woohoo! That's really nice. Yeah. That looks great. 
right. Cleaning up the ends. And more fiberglassing. In go the seats. We found disposable syringes were a fantastic way to apply the epoxy glue. So we've been really busy in the shed the last couple of days trying to get all of the varnishing sorted. Um, over here we've got the tiller, starting to look really nice, and the dagger board. And then over here we've got the two booms, and here are the rudder pieces. And we've had to hang them all up so they can dry without touching anything. And then over here, we've got the new mast. These are just hanging out in between Krista's catamaran that he's building. This is Krista's shed that we're borrowing for this little project. And over here, we've got the seats, which are all lovely and shiny that you can see there. And then over here, we've got the washboards for Bacchus. So this one's been done. You can see it's looking lovely. And this one is what it used to look like um, before. So this one's getting sorted out today with some varnish. So come up here and have a look at how the dinghy is getting on. So yesterday uh, I was building the seat supports into the dinghy. Um, and if you have a look over here, you can see now, if I come around this side, we've got now these um, supports here, which will, uh, take the weight of the seats. So they've been fiberglassed into place. And we've put a, like a coving along the top here. And then underneath, they've got um, fiberglass cloth and another coving. So they're nice and strong. So today we're going to be taking the whole dinghy outside uh, and sanding it, um, sanding the inside of the dinghy. Um, and then we'll be ready to start painting it, which is really exciting. Oh, sanding. I think 80% of boat building is sanding. How funny is this? These are the oars that came uh, for our dinghy. Uh, and I don't know if you can see on the sticker here where they've come from. All the way from Palmerston North, New Zealand. So we're back day, what day is it now? Day 12 of Project Dinghy. Uh, it doesn't feel like that long, it's gone really quickly. Um, but if you come over here, you can see how we're looking. So yesterday, we got um, the rub rails on here. So that's two pieces of timber, and we glued them together, and then we've cramped them onto the side of the boat. And you'll see we've used every available cramp uh, in the shed, which is what you do. Uh, and they're a little bit proud here, but we'll just cut that off and we'll round it. Um, and we've got these little knees in as well. So these are um, just pieces of hardwood which we've put in all four of the corners which sort of reinforce the corners and protect them and they look quite nice as well. Um, so yeah, she's looking, uh, she's looking good. And we sand it all inside too so this is ready to, oh, yeah. Yeah. to get resin on it on the inside but that's not going to happen today. No, that's not happening today. Uh, what are we doing today? We're going to flip it. We are. And then we're going to do a bottom, aren't we? Yeah, it's, uh, it's time for another coat of filler uh, on the bottom. Uh, so that's this white kind of creamy sort of layer that you can see on the fiberglass here. We're going to apply the same thing uh, to the underside of the dinghy down there on the fiberglass. Um, and then we are going to start painting. So it's time to start priming uh, the dinghy ready for uh, the gloss paint that we'll put on the top. It's really exciting. We're getting close.
This is the filler mixture which goes on top of the fiberglass. some masking tape, and then it was time to paint. We've just finished the first coat of paint. It's gone onto the bottom of the boat. Um, this is the primer. So the boat is now a delicious shade of avocado green. You'll see the masking job that we've done around the bow transom and same around the stern transom because we're going to keep those uh, varnished. Um, it stinks in here, the thinners uh, are, have got everybody feeling quite high. Um, so we're going to get some fresh air and uh, we will come back tomorrow and we will be cutting the boat in half. It's going to be a big day. Hey. Okay, so something pretty scary is about to happen today. We're going to cut the boat in half. We will have uh, some rum to fortify ourselves and then we're going to take a saw and we're going to cut the boat about here. Um, but we need to cut it in just the right place. So if you come underneath here with the camera, you can see the bulkhead here, which separates the front half from the back half. We've got to get the cut right in between there. Uh, and it's easy from this side because you can see it, but from the outside you can't. So, um, the other day, uh, to help us pull this off, we went and found a long piece of wire, uh, which we cut off the side of an old uh, fuel bowser of all things, and we've sharpened that up, and it's basically going to be a really, really long drill bit. And I'm going to go underneath the boat, and I'm going to drill holes up through um, the bulkhead, and the holes will pop out here, and what that's going to give us is a connect the dots system along the painted underside of the boat and uh, that's where we're going to cut. So, I haven't done this before so we'll see if it works but um, I'm just basically going to poke my drill up through the cardboard and hope that I can uh, find a place to make a hole. Okay, here we go. Hole? Yep, we got a hole. We set up the camera to record a time lapse of this, but sadly it didn't work. Anyway, here's the result. Two boats from one. router to cut a recess into the rail so we could glue on the rope. This would help protect Bacchus when the dinghy comes alongside. Time for the top coat. Dad had the good idea to add a little bit of dark paint to the white just to make it a sort of shade of grey. This was a little bit nicer on your eyes in the sunlight. We're looking pretty good now. Um, the uh, interior's all been sanded. Um, the exterior is looking really slick. We've got the final coat on now. That went on last night. 
Uh, and then at the moment, we're just um, taping up these rails here, and um, they're going to be uh, have a little bit of black glue put in this little groove at the top here. Um, and Bob's just mixing that up now. We used powdered graphite to make a black epoxy glue to go along the top of the planking. This protects it from the UV. We used a two-part epoxy paint. It's trickier to apply, but it's really tough and it lasts for ages. We created non-skid surfaces on the inside of the dinghy by painting on a square of wet paint and then sprinkling on some Epsom salts. Once it's all dry, you can just wash the salts off and you're left with a nice rough surface. The rope rub rail was repurposed from Bacchus's old anchor road. And there she is. We were so excited we actually forgot to film the end. We named her Piwaka Waka and we launched her down at the marina. A huge thank you to Phil and Krista for the use of their shed and also to my parents Bob and Joanna who chose to spend their holiday sanding, painting and gluing with us. If you're interested, We'll put links to fine boat kits and Chesapeake Lightcraft down in the description.